you had to choose, who would make the list for your respect? Well, God, for sure. As the one who created you and the entire universe, God tops the list. Up next, your mom or dad or the grown-ups who take care of you every day, they deserve your respect, even if they just told you to get off your screen. After all, God put them in charge. Number three, your teachers and coaches and other leaders make the list too. You may not always agree with them, but God's put them in place to look out for you. Okay, so respect. Check, check, and check. List done. Except it's not. Because when we follow Jesus, respect for others breaks out of the box. Respect isn't just for those in charge. It's a way to show others they are important by what you say and do. That goes for friends and family. But Jesus showed that our love and respect should extend to anyone in God's image, which adds up to, well, everyone. Jesus included those who were looked over and left out. Jesus said to respect even the people you don't get along with. And Jesus showed that the ultimate mark of respect is to give someone your time and attention. True respect is more than a list. It's a lifestyle. And when others see how you love everyone and put others first, they can see God shining through you. That's why respect is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
me take that. Oh, thanks, Zeke. This week, we're talking about respect. While we take a look at the story of some guys who weren't used to being picked first for anything. Amaya, what is this? <laughs> hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke, and we're talking about respect, which is showing others they are important by what you say and do. So, I've got something for you. Okay. What do you see? Trash. That's what I thought too, until I saw what my friend Abby does. Well, do I get to see too? Absolutely. I think she deserves a drum roll. Hey Abby, we're so excited to have you. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, so I make visuals to help people tell their stories. What kind of visuals? It can be anything. It can be a mural or string art or old clothes. And sometimes I make giant sculptures out of trash. That's cool. Is that what we're doing today? Actually, I had something else in mind. You gotta really look at your materials. So try it. Um, it's crinkly. Yeah, exactly. It's crinkly, kind of like a peony petal is crinkly. A uh, peonette? It's a kind of flower. And so see this cardboard, how it's thick, but it's soft. So you can curve it around like a leaf. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. Well, what about, how about this one? Oh, cool. See how in the center, it's like the shape of the inside of an anemone. Uh, and then a what? <laughs> it's a flower, Z. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was thinking some kind of sea creature or something. We could totally do that, too. But today, I thought we'd make a recycle bin bouquet. I love it. Let's, Let's make, make it. it. Hey, this is something you can do at home. So follow along. So we're going to start with some of that trash that we dumped out. We've got a piece of an old shopping bag here. And again, you can feel how it can start to feel like a petal. A petal? Some old magazine clippings. What is this gonna be? That's gonna be the center of a sunflower. With this on top, the inside Ooh. of a cardboard box. And we're gonna use that egg carton that you found. Hey. <laughs> Pass those on back now that you've felt them. And I'm gonna show you what our first step is. We're gonna start with this guy, because as you can see, we got a yellow bag, so that's gonna be our sunflower petals. Right. The first thing that you wanna do is cut a circle. And then you're gonna go through and make all the petals, one cut after another. Mm. So you can see that takes a little bit of time. So I went on and cut petals for you guys so we can make flowers even faster today. Thank you, <laughs> appreciate it. So you can pick up these and what we'll start to do is take them and just like we were feeling that paper, start to bend them like petals of a real flower. Okay. Cause flowers aren't perfect. They have petals going every which way. And that's exactly what this paper lets you do. Okay, so bend, so you can bend them up. Hmm. And take your next piece and do the same thing. How's that? That looks great. That looks to me like a flower out in the wild. Sweet. <laughs> so when you've done that with both of them, then we get to glue them together. So you guys think you're ready to glue? Yes, I'm ready. Almost. <laughs> So you'll take your bigger one, that's your bottom. So you'll take your bottom flower and use your glue gun and be careful, it gets really hot. So remember, you're gonna wanna have an adult for this. So you just make a ring of glue and press the top flower down so that they stick together. And that's it, you got your two layers of flower right there. Oh, I'm so excited to make glue. There you go, be careful. Thank you. Awesome. We'll pass this back down. We're gonna glue some more though. How do you feel? I think mine's looking really good. It already looks like a flower, right? Yeah. Oh, All right. So now we're gonna get to the green part that you asked about. Our little magazine clipping. And you wanna do little tiny, tiny snips. So you can see that definitely takes a lot of time. So I went on and did that one for you too. And you have this little thing that you can start to do the same thing with. Kind of crunch them around. Don't be afraid to wad it up because 
Again, flowers aren't exactly perfect. All the little pieces go in all different directions. So that's, you want it to ruffle up. How's it feel? It's looking good, I think. <laughs> so we'll do the same thing with the hot glue gun. And you'll do a tiny little bit of glue. My turn. How does it look? <gasps> there like it is. It looks the great. center of the flower. <laughs> so there it is. You've got your flower already going. But wow. now, you know how the center of a sunflower has like a big lumpy bit mm -hmm. in the middle? All the seeds and stuff. Exactly. So that's what we're going to make with this. So you see how the center of the cardboard has all that lumpy bumpy stuff? Mm -hmm. That perfectly makes the center of a sunflower where all the seeds are. So we cut it at an angle so we can roll it up like this. This is where it gets fun. You take the big end. Roll. So you guys see we're making a big round center for the inside of our sunflower and it's starting to look all nice and lumpy like the seed part, right? It's going. <laughs> yep, and then just glue down that little tail. And the next thing you'll do after that is on the flat side. So you guys can see we're going to glue it down in the center of our flower. Right in the middle of the green bit, like this. There you go. That's the trick. Not too okay, much, thanks. but just enough. Alrighty. Yeah, that looks perfect. <gasps> Yay. There's the center of it. <laughs> All our flower needs is a stem, right? Right. So what we have that we use for that, this is some floral wire, which means it's green already on the outside. You can get that at a craft store, but you could use any wire that you guys have at your house. And so what I did is I went on and attached a little piece of cardboard to the top because we're going to use the end of our egg carton and it has a hole in it. So what we're going to do is put a little glue right around the bottom. So just like stringing a bead or threading a needle, you're gonna put that wire right through that hole and pull that square down into the base of it. Pull it in nice and snug. Got it. Perfect. And then we'll attach it to our flowers. So Zeke, while you're doing that, the next step is to put the glue right here on these things that look like petals. That's what's going to hold our flower all together. And then your flower goes on like a hat. <laughs> and that looks great. Perfect glue. There you go. Wow. <laughs> and you can bend your flower any way you want so it looks like it's out in the field <laughs> and blowing in the breeze. And there it is. Your finished sunflower Look at from that. trash. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is lovely. Yeah. It's amazing how you looked at a piece of junk and saw this. And what's super cool is we can do the same thing with people too. Like people flowers? More like if you really see people and get to know them, then you can, you know, see things that are overlooked, see the texture in everybody, see all of their quirks that makes every single person uncommonly beautiful. And that is exactly where we're going today. It's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into a relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem. God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he was baptized in the Jordan River. God spoke from heaven. This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. After 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus began to go from town to town, teaching and healing. Even though he's God's son, he didn't start out in the capital city of Jerusalem. He didn't go to the, the fine homes of the religious leaders. Instead, 
Jesus met with ordinary, everyday people on hillsides and by the lake shore. And he chose some of the most unlikely people to be his closest friends and followers. Four of these men were uneducated fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. One morning after a long night of fishing, Peter and his friends had caught exactly zero fish. What a drag, cleaning the nets without a single fish to show for it. I may fall asleep right here. This morning, the fishermen weren't alone on the beach. Jesus was standing on the lakeshore, and though it was early, a huge crowd had gathered. They were so eager to get close to Jesus that they jostled and shoved, backing him right up to the water. But instead of pushing back, Jesus simply stepped over into Peter's boat and said, Go out a little way from shore. Now, if you're Peter, you're probably feeling a whole bunch of things. On the one hand, after fishing all night, you really want to get home and go to bed. But on the other hand, this unusual teacher has singled you out of the crowd to help him. I mean, you're used to people just ignoring you or <laughs> wrinkling their noses at the fishy smell you can't get out of your clothes. With all those things racing through his head, Peter did just what Jesus asked and guided the boat a little way out from shore. When Jesus was done speaking, he turned to Peter and said, Go out into deep water. Let down the nets so you can catch some fish. Master, uh, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Now, even though Peter couldn't help protesting a little, he already respected Jesus' authority. Uh, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Peter guided the boat out into deep water, and he and Andrew let down their nets, expecting more disappointment. Instead, whole schools of fish seemed to appear out of nowhere. Oh, uh, Andrew, uh, pull harder! The net is going to burst! Peter called out to his fishing partners back on shore. James, John, bring the boat! It took everyone to reel in the nets. Both boats overflowed with floundering fish. Back on shore, Peter was so overwhelmed, he didn't give a single thought to that massive haul of fish. Instead, he threw himself down at Jesus' feet. Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Jesus smiled at the group of ragtag fishermen. Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. The crowd must have been shocked to see Jesus choose these common fishermen as close friends and disciples. Right away, Peter, Andrew, James, and John hauled their boats up on shore. They didn't even stop to clean and sell all those fish. Jesus wasn't finished calling disciples. One day, he stopped at a booth where a man named Matthew was collecting taxes. Okay, now, first thing you gotta understand, no one talked to a tax collector unless they had to. These men were hired to collect taxes from their own people for the Roman government. They would charge extra to cover their own salaries. I mean, everybody hated them for it. But Jesus walked right up to Matthew. Come, follow me. Everyone was shocked, including Matthew. But Matthew didn't hesitate. Something inside him just recognized that Jesus was special. Mm -hmm. He got up immediately to follow Jesus and even invited Jesus to come to a dinner party at his house. At Matthew's home, Jesus shared a meal with tax collectors and others who were seen as outcasts. The religious leaders were shocked. They grumbled to Jesus' disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard what they were saying. Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to turn away from their sins. Jesus wasn't worried about collecting the right followers or popular friends. Instead, he included everyone. Jesus chose to spend his time with people who saw how much they needed him, instead of those, like the religious leaders, who thought they were too important to need help. The end. I wonder who Jesus would talk to if he came to my school. That is a great question. It's like Jesus' teaching went beyond anything anyone has ever heard before. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? 
Every single person ever is made in God's image. That means everybody you meet is important and worthy of love. Just like Jesus, we can choose to include the people who get overlooked and left out. Maybe people who aren't popular. Or people who are new or different. Even people who have messed up. Yeah, like there's this girl in my school who eats by herself at a table in the corner every day. I couldn't buy her to have lunch with me. Yeah, and there's this kid in my grade who always gets picked last for stuff. I could have him be my lab partner in science class. I think you guys have got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. Include people who are left out. Hey, do we get to make more flowers? Oh, already on it. <gasps> wow. I still could not wrap my head around how this came from a pile of trash. <laughs> you just gotta keep your eyes open and take a good look at all the cool things you find. And the people you meet. Yeah, there's always something amazing to discover. Exactly. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next, next time. time. Oh, this is awesome. This is so amazing. What did you make this out of? Oh, it's a food box and then a, a little potato bag that inside the center. And check out, these are the bottoms of an egg carton too. <gasps>